In this video, I'm going to do a comprehensive comparison of the LiveView features and functionality between the Nikon D7000 and the Canon 7D. I'll be focusing just on the aspects of LiveView that are specific to still photography rather than those related to the creation of movies. As you'd expect, there are a lot of similarities between the two cameras, but there are also some important differences as well, and some of those differences are rather significant and may be deal breakers for those of you deciding between the two cameras. I'll be pointing out those differences as I go along. Alright, so I'll first show you how to enter LiveView. On the D7000, you enter LiveView by pulling the uh, LiveView lever on the back of the camera. And then on the 7D, you enter LiveView by moving the selector to the still photography mode versus the movie mode, and then pressing Start Stop. To magnify the image on Live View for the D7000, you press the Qual button, which doubles as a Magnify button. And there are five levels of magnification, starting at Unmagnify, <clears throat> all the way down to a one-to-one -one, uh, pixel magnification. There's also a Zoom Out button, which is the ISO button, which gets you back out to the unmagnified view. And also, regardless of whatever magnification level you're at, if you press the OK button on the multi-selector, that immediately returns you back to an unmagnified view. On the 7D, the magnify button is the AF selector button on the back of the camera. And unlike the D7000, which has five levels of magnification, the 7D only has three. So again, you start an unmagnified view, press the magnify button once to get to 5x magnification, and then once again to get to 10x. And then if you press it again, you get back to the unmagnified view. Now, on the 7D, there's no unmagnify button or unzoom button, so the only way to get back to the unmagnified view is to cycle through all the magnification options, because there's no separate button to immediately return you back like there is on the D7000 with the OK button. So in that regard, the D7000 is a bit more convenient, plus it has additional levels of magnification uh, that the 7D lacks. One advantage, though, on the 7D is the fact that the magnify button is on the same side as the shutter which is much more convenient for a one-handed live view operation. So that, that allows you to magnify and have your hand ready to take a photograph. At the same time, your left hand is on the lens barrel for potential manual focusing. On the D7000, you have to use two hands for most instances where the left hand is on the zoom button, the right hand is on the shutter, but that doesn't leave a hand available in order for you to manual focus on the lens barrel. So, uh, to me, it's a big advantage for the 7D and the ergonomics to be able to use just one hand to both zoom and uh, take the picture uh, with the left hand available for possible focusing. One big advantage the D7000 has over the 7D in regards to focusing and magnifying in live view is that with the 7000, you can move the uh, focus and zoom box anywhere within the image frame on the sensor. Um, so all the way down to the very corners of the frame, you can move the, uh, the, the indicator box to and zoom in on that and attempt to focus there. Whereas on the 7D, when you're using contrast autofocus, uh, the camera won't let you move that focus box all the way to the edges of the frame. It sort of limits you somewhere around, it appears to be about 70% through, through the frame. And so if you need to focus somewhere at the very edges of the, uh, the sensor, uh, when you're doing, for instance, off-center uh, focusing, uh, you just can't do it with the 7D. So you need to sort of uh, either do a focus and recompose to get that edge within this uh, perimeter that the, the camera does allow you to focus in, um, or you just need to use manual focusing or your eye to, to, uh, to make up for the, that lack of ability. So um, I consider this a very big advantage for the 7000 because it's coming very handy to be able to zoom in zoom in at the very edges of the uh, image frame. The informational display on the D7000 when you first enter Live View shows you your currently selected aperture, shutter, and ISO. In this case, it's f2.8 with a shutter of 1 30th and an ISO of 800. It also shows you your currently selected exposure mode, which is manual. Uh, then shows you your uh, currently selected AF mode, which is AFS, which is single servo with a normal size focus target. Uh, active D lighting is disabled. Uh, the image setting and resolution is set to raw. Uh, the white balance is currently a custom white balance, so that uh, PRE is short for preset. The uh, metering mode is set to evaluative, 
And it also shows you the number of available photographs on your SD card, which in this case is 451. The informational display on the 7D is very similar to the 7000. You have the current aperture, shutter, and ISO, which are set identically to the 7000. This is at f2.8 with a shutter of 1 30th and an ISO of 800. It also shows the currently selected white balance, which in this case is a custom white balance. Uh, the picture style, which is set to faithful. The ALO setting, or the automatic light optimizer, is disabled. And the image size and resolution is set to raw. Uh, again, just like the 7000, it shows you the number of available photographs on your card, which is 294. And unlike the 7000, though, it also shows you a current metering display, and I'll talk more about that in a second. There are additional informational displays on the D7000. If you press the info button on the back of the camera, you get the same information as the first display with the addition of uh, how much remaining time is on the card for movies as well as the currently selected movie mode, which in this case is 1080 at 24 frames per second. If you press the info button again, you get the framing for your movies, which shows you which portions of the image would show up on a movie. Uh, this is necessary because the aspect ratio for movies is different than the 3-2 ratio uh, for normal still photography. If you press the info button once again, you get that same movie framing, but with the addition of a rule of thirds grid, which is useful for composition. Pressing the info button again gives you an electronic level, which comes in handy uh, to level the camera when you don't, don't have the benefit of a bubble level on uh, your hot shoe. And then pressing the info button one last time returns you back to the original informational display. Like the D7000, the 7D also has multiple informational displays. If you press the info button on the back of the, uh, the camera, uh, you first get the electronic level, same as you have for the 7000. Pressing the button again gives you a, a cleaner display which only shows you the currently uh, selected zoom box with all the other information removed from the screen. So this is good if you need to see the full image on the display uh, for a full composition. Pressing the info button again returns a portion of that informational display where it shows you the meter as well as the ISO and number of available photographs. And pressing the info button once again gets you back to the original screen. Now the 7D also has a grid display which is disabled by default, but if you want to enable it, you can go into the menu, into the live view settings, and turn the grid display to, there's actually two selectable grid displays, the first of which is the rule of thirds display. Then when you go back to live view, that grid is now available in all of the, all of the informational displays on the LCD. To set the white balance on the D7000, you use the same procedure you would use outside of live view you hold down the white balance button on the back of the camera, and then you can use the main dial to set your main white balance mode. In this case, I'm switching between preset and uh, incandescent. And then once you have your current mode selected, you can use the sub dial on the front of the camera to select the options specific for that uh, white balance mode. So in this case, I'm using the preset white balance mode. So using the front dial, the sub dial, uh, alternates between the multiple presets that you can have configured for the camera for that white balance mode. To set the white balance on the 7D, you press the white balance button on the top of the camera, then use the rear quick dial to switch between the various white balance modes. To set the ISO on the D7000, you hold down the ISO button on the rear of the camera, and then use the main control dial to switch between the available ISOs. To set the ISO on the 7D, you press the ISO button on the top of the camera, then use the main control dial on the front of the camera to switch between the available ISOs. In this case, I have the 7D configured to uh, use full stop increments of ISO, which is why those intermediate ISOs are unavailable. To set the image quality on the D7000, there's actually no image quality uh, display on Live View, nor is there a quick button to change it. So in order to change the image quality, you would use the same procedure you would use outside of Live View, where you press the menu button, go into the shooting menu, then scroll down to the image quality uh, selection and then change to whichever quality you want. To set the image quality on the 7D, you press the Q button on the back of the camera. Then you can use the multi-selector because there's multiple options here, so you'll want to move it to the selection for the image quality. Then you can use the quick control dial to switch between the various available image quality settings. 
To set the metering mode on the D7000, you press the metering button on the top of the camera, then use the rear control dial in order to change the metering mode. So it's currently set to evaluative, and this changes it to spot metering, uh, center weighted metering, and then once again returns you back to evaluative or matrix metering. Unlike the D7000, which gives you all of the available metering modes in live view, on the 7D, the only available metering mode is evaluative. So if you're somebody who relies on spot or center weighted or the other metering modes, you'll need to exit live view on the 7D, switch to that metering mode, uh, then meter your exposure and dial in your aperture and shutter speed, and then drop back into live view before you take your photograph. So this can be rather restricting, uh, again, for those of you who rely on those other metering modes. One major limitation on the D7000 is the absence of a meter display. So for example, if you use manual mode on the 7D, you can see here if I change the aperture or shutter speed, the meter display on the rear of the camera shows you how far off you are from the calculated meter generated from the camera's metering sensors. So this is useful so that even though you're using manual exposure, uh, you're still relying on the camera's evaluative metering to see how far you are from um, the, the normal exposure the camera would generate uh, in the automatic metering modes. On the uh, D7000, there is no metering display. And so you have no idea whether or not the currently selected uh, shutter speed and aperture you have dialed in are going to generate the proper exposure for the image. So by default, the LCD display, uh, in, in addition to having the absence of a meter display, also shows you constant brightness regardless of the configured uh, shutter speed and aperture. So again, you miss another visual cue as to what your exposure is going to be in the final photograph. Now you can on the D7000 turn on exposure simulation, and you do that by going into the shooting menu and going down to the movie options or movie settings and then turning manual movie settings on. This is sort of a roundabout way to get uh, uh, exposure simulation because this appears to have been intended specifically for uh, creation of movies, but it still works nonetheless. Now with the exposure simulation turned on, if you change the shutter speed, you can see here how me increasing the shutter speed is uh, lowering the apparent brightness on the LCD which is giving you a rough indication of what the exposure will be like in your photograph. Now I say rough because uh, a visual brightness from the LCD is a poor substitute for an actual exposure meter like you have on the 7D. Uh, also, uh, a major limitation of this manual movie mode, uh, which I've entered to get the exposure simulation, is that you can't reduce the uh, shutter speed below 1 30th of a second. Uh, I think that's because uh, when you enter this mode, Nikon presumes you're going to be taking a movie, and so it doesn't want you using a, a shutter speed below 1 30th. Another major limitation of this mode is you can't change the aperture once you've entered live view. So uh, again, with the manual movie setting on, uh, within manual mode, you, you cannot change the aperture, nor can you reduce the shutter speed below 1 30th. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm moving the subcontrol dial on the front, which should be changing the aperture, but it's having no effect. Whereas if I go back and change that movie setting, manual movie setting back to off, and then enter live view, I now have full aperture control again, and I'm able to set the shutter speed to whatever setting that I want. So I think this is a major omission on the D7000, is the absence of a meter. Uh, so if you're uh, typically using uh, manual mode, this can be a major hindrance to your metering. Uh, the one thing you can do, though, as a workaround, if you want to find out, for instance, if you know what your aperture is, in this case 2.8, but you're not certain what shutter speed you want or you need to use or what the camera would meter for, you could switch the mode dial on the back of the camera to, to aperture mode, in which case the camera will meter and show you what aperture it would have selected based upon the current, uh, I'm sorry, which shutter speed the, uh, the camera would have selected. Uh, based upon the current aperture. And then you can drop back into manual mode and then dial in that aperture that you saw on that aperture priority display to get the proper exposure, or at least the exposure to match what the camera uh, believes the exposure should be based upon the current metering mode.